Can you hear me all right? Thank you. Guys, I want to talk tonight on the uh, counter series, uh, something that's been very good for us the last three years. Uh, it's been a, a work in progress. Uh, we started, again, three years ago running this play, and we're learning more and more about it. Uh, between 14 and 15, we got a lot better with this play. I want to show you some stats, and there's really only one stat that matters, and that's wins. But in 14, we were 13th in the conference uh, rushing the football at 146 a game. All right? And in 15, we ended up going to second in the conference in rushing the football. And the counter play for us, all right, we made strides, and we feel like this was a huge, huge part of our success in running the football. As you can see, the gains made from 14 and 15 running the counter, all right, and this play just getting better and better for us. Uh, some reasons as to why our run game improved, and I want to point this out. Coach Fulmer, his pride and joy is the offensive line. He's come back to our practices, and these guys to, his, to the left right here, Antone Davis, first round pick, Philadelphia Eagles, Harry Galbraith, Chad Clifton, VFL's former great players. The pride and history of the tradition of the position. That's Coach Fulmer. Jawan James, James Stone, and Zach Fulton. Three guys that we had the opportunity to coach year one. I point this out for again, the progress we made running the football. He came to practice and he said, where's the sled? I've never been one to use a sled. Shoots and boards, block and movement. That's what we've done, all right, over the course of time. He had a look about him when he asked about the sled. I pointed out, because again, it's a tradition. And I will tell you this, we hit the sled. All right, from that day on, I said, we're going to make this important that if it was enough for him to make that comment, we're going to block the sled. And we started out in the beginning of practice, uh, period two, uh, we hit it, and, and it's a five minute period. We want to set a temperament and set a mentality right from the get go. And, and, and it's simply that. And I think you get what you demand, all right? Mike DeBoard, our offensive coordinator, right up here at the top, is with us in everything we do. In our, in our uh, positional meetings, our individual drills, the structure of the practice, all right? The important part of us running the football and, and, and just the structure of everything we do, he's involved, all right? Between the two of us talking through formations, all those things, but the demands and getting what you uh, put into it is why, again, I believe that we've had the success running the football. The next part is this. What do you own in your offense running the ball? You see this picture, you think, you know, to me, the first thing to mind is the counter play with the Redskins, with all these greats up here, with Grimm, May, Bostic, Jacoby, and the guy right here in the middle, Raleigh McKenzie, a former VFL, one of the original hogs, going back to the tradition of the position. But guys that say, I, we, we have five or six run plays, what do you really own? Mike DeBoard, again, our offensive coordinator, when we first met last spring, as an offense, he said, man, we're going to own the inside zone. We're going to own that. And by gosh, we did. That was our, our, our best run play, our most efficient run play. The counter is right behind it. As I said, it's a work in progress, but we're getting there. But again, what do you hang your hat on? What do your kids know? What do they believe in when it's nut cutting time? And the last part is this. Coming to this clinic for years, you know, the guys that, that, you know, between, I thought of Coach Alexander with Corey Dillon, uh, Paul Boudreau talking about um, uh, Barry Sanders, guys that see these guys carrying the ball. At the end of the day, we got a quarterback that's extremely talented that you're going to see in our counter series of him carrying the ball. Alvin Kamara, great speed and vision. And then Jalen Hurd, a thousand yard back, 6'3, 245 pounds. Runs pissed off, extremely competitive, and he blocks for protection pissed off. And that's, 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 you know, for those guys, for us to block, we get excited about that. And just to add with Coach Fulmer and why I love when he comes to the practices, first time he saw Jalen and he walked by, he said, if I was still coaching, he'd be one sore son of a gun on Sunday. So that's how many times you like him to carry the ball and, and, and we feed him as much as we can. The next.
The next thing is why the counter? Again, number one, it's an attitude. You know, the spread, you know, people say the spread, it's finesse, it's this, it, it, it's not. For us, we're in the shotgun, we want to run the counter first and foremost in attitude. The structure of the defense, we want the double team to take place. If the, if the structure presents itself with a guard and tackle, we want to obviously knock, knock them off the ball. We want a guard that's pulling on his course to be inside out on that defensive end. There's no read in this, all right? As that guard pulls, he's forcing the issue. Do we get the ends to spill it, wrong arm it, all that? Yes, but that guard's course is into the line, inside out on that end. Now, the difference, that, you know, showing the, 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 the redskin pitcher, we pull the guard in the tight end, not the guard in the tackle, all right? So the tight end's gonna fit up inside of that, and we'll talk more as, as we go with that. The gap scheme being number two. We're up tempo, we're gonna go fast. So, again, if the defense is not getting lined up as fast, or you'll see some clips where there's a misfit, it's a gap scheme for us. We're going fast, we know our course, we know our track, and away we go. And then the last thing is, as we've studied this play, it's downhill in, in the course of the back. So by gosh, we're on the left hash, that ball's getting, uh, the, the ball carrier's hitting, the times that you see the clips, it's down the hash. It's, it's, it's an A-gap play, occasionally it may slip to a B, but it is a downhill play for us. Our backfield sets, just showing the base start of it. Offset here, obviously we're gonna be running it to the right. The back's gonna come through, sitting in the chair, getting the ball, hitting up the hash. The next look, he can align to the tight end side in which he just punch steps to the tight end side, getting back to where the tight end is ahead. He's inside and he's working again down the hash. The last look being in the pistol. If you ask the question, what's, is there any one that we like over the other? And I think it's more of this, the percentages. As you get into week five, six, or seven, and teams are breaking you down, uh, obviously we can start them out here and tick him over to this alignment, what have you. And the other one is this. We'll ask our running backs coach, we'll say, uh, maybe Jalen likes to be in the pistol more. He just has, he sees it better, whatever the case may be. You got to ask yourself what, what fits you all with it. So those are three ways that we line up with the back. Obviously the quarterback in the backfield uh, running it with also the back in the backfield, which I'll, I'll get to as well in the film in which he's reading it. Now, just some clips, and here's what I want to do with the, the, the next part. It's just all the film that I'm going to show you. I got guys highlighted for, say, the combinations. They were starting out base, then we'll uh, progress into you know, some of the different looks. But we see a lot of the bear front, and I'm going to show you clips of that and some ways we attack that, some of the motions that we add to it, all right, with the quarterback and then also the quarterback read. But just starting with the base look, this is, again, mostly, an, you know, this play for us is an 11 personnel, all right? So we're running the counter to the left right here, liking the movement right here on the left side of the guard and tackle into the three. And this is a play in 2014 that, as I talked to you about with us growing in this play and us getting better at running the football, all of us sit in here and we say, what are our likes, what are our dislikes? Your quality control the off season. Here's what we need to get better at. Here's what we're looking at. This play at the end of 14 was pretty good for us. You know, we finished the season seven and six, and we said, you know what, this play's good. We got a few more things we need to clean up. We need to keep building on it. And this, all right, just circling these three, the left guard, he's gonna be inside footwork first, second step to the crotch upfield, surfacing the outside shoulder hand. His eyes are for any run through, the tackle's going to be in a gallop, square demeanor right underneath the three. If the three is going to squeeze where the surface is not there, he's going to work to feed and knock over the three into the guard. But they are going to stay into this double. That's the biggest thing as you watch this. From the center's block back to this double, by declaration, most cases we're going to double this all the way to backside. He's going to stay into this securing and knocking the hell out of the three with the tight end and there's the back on the punch step as he's coming up through there again is working to even be tighter for the hash 
The tackle's doing a good job of staying into the three. The center is on a quick three backside, right to the V of the neck. Right here, a quick three, and he's going to work the fight vertical upfield into that pressure of the two eye. Now again, the guard, and you'll see the different clips, but the guard on his pull course right now, inside out. We found this to be the case, man. As we studied this, one of these two cats is booking himself out. So the tight end staying tight on his course, we ended up just saying, we're booking that. We're going to stay tight in our track, where again, it eliminates the read of, do we bounce this thing? Where is it going? It is downhill. It is a hash play. This is a good clip on the right guard in the double for anything that may run through backside. Nice, jobs with it. nice job with his hips down. Again, this is right down the hash. But the three technique, there's the footwork by the guard, the tackle right now in his gallop and square. Three's crossed, it's gone, he can keep working to stay tight, but the right guard does a nice job right there, uh, just right there collecting that and continues to keep working his feet. Now the tight end again, man, the back coming through on this, the tight end just square up more. This is a 14 clip, his turn is too much on his pull. We took the tight ends more on their pull to be really a skip pull mentality on them, where he's taking that on better being inside out on that linebacker. This is before the half. And, and, and this is more so for the center and the backside tackle on how we handle you know, the block back and the area hinge. Uh, but we're in an up stance. This is just before half. Both guards are up. But right now, again, the center's going on a quick three. We got two three techniques right here. Right tackle, flat, fills the center, back out right there, and again, downhill. Left guard's too much over top of his toes. His base is too wide. But the tackle stays into it because he's still feeling the, uh, uh, the three, not, not, uh, compl not secured by the guard. But just some base two eye looks. We change this technique up by the front side guard on the two eye. <clears throat> now, we're going to get to the pull, but the guards on the two eye from 14 to 15, 14, if we were blocking the two eye, if you come up, be white, please. As a left guard on the two eye, we were working the hat gear across the body. Just like in the three technique, the inside foot, second step, surface, eyes, all that. The two eye, we were working to get the hat gear across. We've tightened it up more. We tightened it up more where we're working the, the guard right through the V of the neck. Tighter on the track right there. Again, hash play, they're trying to bring a pressure with this. Communication, getting back to the up tempo. Center, go ahead and work up, work up right there. And there's your hash play. He can even stay even tighter to this. But there's the tight end more square on his pull, and he's really just seeking right now. Front side to back side. This ends up being two outside. It gets back to, again, downhill. All right, downhill with it. Now, not a good job here by the right tackle. All right, he needed to stay tighter, taking care of the downs first, Letting the tight end be the potential cleanup. Now I want you to, and, and I put this on here for this reason as well, watch how the end attacks our guard. This is about the third play of the game, maybe even the second. And going into each game, I say, well, let's see how their ends are going to play the counter, right? You go into the games, you say, we're going to, how they play, and they spill, and this, that, and the other. Well, by God, Jay Sean, unfortunately, took the brunt of that one. So 
we'll move forward in this uh, in, into the talk to how we handle this part of it. But really, right now, Jay Sean's doing what he needs to. He's going to go ahead, cut the cut or what have you, and it ends up being now a cram run downhill. All right. Downhill with it. So you see the, uh, the tackle needs to stay tighter. The tight end's going to work up through. It's a cram run. Pretty good by the center in his hands. And working to just finish and get what he can. And just like I said, running pissed off. This is, uh, against again, going up tempo right here. Not completely uh, lined up by the opponent we're playing. And, and I like the part in here between the center and the tackle. All right, the center going on the block back, he overshoots the landmark. He's out of control on it. Doesn't feel the guard. Why are we loving the, why are we love the gap scheme like we do? Right now, there it is. Good job by the tackle right here. Back, stay downhill. Downhill, there is no bounce to it. Again, watching the guard right here on his pull. And the biggest thing on this, man, is pulling and, and, and looking in terms of our alignments, our two-foot splits. The guard's hands are going to the toes of the uh, center into the line on the pull. The biggest thing we look for is the first step of being into the line. There's nothing flat, there's no, there's no bowing, none of that. Now just some movement versus the shade. This was 14 in the bowl game. Watch where the ball hits, all right? Now again, movement, but from the right guard, right where he needs to be, good base by him. Out of the pistol for the back. Downhill right there, and again, right here chasing it. Chasing it here to here, really the front side A to back side A, um, really staying tight to the hash. Notice the pulling guard. Even with the end working to squeeze, he's still working to fight to get inside out on his ass. Good on the double again on the movement right here. Still forcing the hat to be inside. There it is again, right up inside of it. And he's still wide. Still staying insecure in this. Center on the quick three and fighting back up over top. Now I put this on because this is uh, RPO, but again, just versus the movement. The center overshoots and does a good job recovering the work to be quick up field with it right here. But even if the ball was given right here, they're still right now working really tight downhill on it for the tight end seeking through front side. Now getting into the quarterback empty. Now you remember the clip earlier with the guard getting his legs taken out. Well, this time he pulled, he was gonna throw, all right? No, we don't want him throwing, all right? We want him to go ahead and continue through, all right? Get your feet out of the hole right there, all right? He got his ass cut, taken out, and you're gonna find for our guys, and I ask them, against our own people, whatever the case may be, how's the end playing, who are you attacking, some guys upfield, so forth and so on, but uh, he got taken out earlier, he wanted to go ahead and throw at his ass. But the tackle here, for the most part, again, with the gallop and the high leg by him, right here, guard get off the toes, does a nice job right here, of really working to stay square and giving him his chance to get up to the uh, second level. Again, this right here, the course by the tackle, and learned this years ago in here at this clinic, of just being square by the tackles in the gallop up, all right? If still working to be, whether he saw him or not, but just being able to stay right up the hash. There's your tight end through, the tackle staying square right there to secure it. He has all that he can, but as you know, he bounces out and gets what he does there. We're not saying a word. All right, this was uh, in 14. 
We had a quarterback situation in which we uh, had an injury and, and Dobbs took over, and we added this into the offense. And, and, you know, whether we fly him out, do different things with the read, it really puts some stress on the defense that there's some moving parts right there and communication taking place, that everything ties in. Getting back to the point earlier I made as far as, you know, and, and why we like this play, why I get excited about it is, you know, our players really believe in it and owning it. You know, right now, staying square into the double right here, knowing right now the hash in terms of the landmark right here. Again, the tight end need to be just a bit more square to be inside out, but it's definite a threat with the quarterback. And if you, you know, offensively, you may not have a quarterback who can run. Wildcat package. Uh, putting a receiver, and two running backs, what have you. But now it's with some motion with it. And you can see on this clip here, again, there's a great example of the hash, the pull by the guard inside out. There's an example as well, men. If there's not much surface on the, th on, on the down lineman on the double team with the tackle, watch how square he is. It even be just a bit lower, but knocks his ass completely over right there. Center's fighting a quick three and working upfield right there. There's your tight end coming through, and right now square, much better and square by him. And here's again, he, he, getting back to talking about the, the you know, working hard to, to, to the mentality and all that. They came off after this series, they said, Coach, the hash. You watch right here, this tackle, 77 and 71. 71's from right here, Colerain in Cincinnati. And it just, you know, they just keep working it over and over and over. And I get back to Mike DeBoard and just training and repping it. And whether it's against our defense or our own people, we structure the practice so that uh, we're obviously getting a, a lot of reps at this and it's paying off. Again, the two eye. Tackle really right here could be a bit more square on this to work up, but there's still some cloth there, and this is where, again, studying this, him still just staying tight to that right there. Sees him, makes the cut, but we're handling the downs. Again, an attitude in north and south, handling the downs. Good finish. All right, here's one with the end up field. All right, watch the mesh with the back and the uh, quarterback right here with the mesh. This end from Missouri could get it. He's quick as hell upfield. There's a change for the guard in terms of his course. That happens through stu the film study and through the course of the game, really. But initially starting, obviously, in the line of scrimmage and working in the back's course, being tight, not bouncing. Right here, good anchor with the guard on the three. Good with his hips being down. There's a second step upfield. And again, right now for the tackle, right up underneath the three for any run through. There it is. Stay tight as the back. Nice job by the tight end. There it is. Here's one with the guard forcing the issue on the end. All right, the way the end plays this one, the guard as he's pulling, look at him force his hat gear inside. Same thing with the three right now, continue to bring his feet. Watch where the landmark of the back or where the course of the back is, downhill. And again, the tight end's just working off of it. So there's not that part in it where it's, I got to bounce outside and all that. It's up inside, cram it. All right, now we add, still with the quarterback run, the part in the read for him, all right? So we have the base running back run, quarterback run. Now there's the read part in it, where he can read the end to give it out as a space play or keep it. For us up front, counter's called. That's it, all right? 
getting back, if I, if I can say this, the motions, guys, if there's any time there's a motion that's, that's in play, there's a call made by the quarterback that we, we hear that. But as far as our, our handling the downs, that stays the same. As far as the three technique, two eye, by gosh, if, if the tackle's on his course and he's feeling cloth, he's staying into that. All right, there can, there can be some bumping of the linebackers and all, but unless something's clearly crossing your face, we're going to stay into the downs, the motion back, bumping backers, all right, stay true to, uh, to our course. Here's a great example, men, of the tight end. Now, again, this is 14. He needs to be more what? Square. All right, but watch how he can clean up on this. The guard's too fast in leaving this. Jay Sean overruns that, but watch how the tight end cleans that up. He books himself out of it. All right, so he falls back in. However, the tight end's there to clean up, to get a piece and continue to work up. Center again on a quick three, fighting hard to work up field, to work up field. Here's one again, as well as these guys play the, uh, as well as uh, Bama plays the double teams. Good example of the tackle right here. Watch where his hands go, right down to the hip. All right, watch what happens. Now the guard needs to continue his feet, not turn his, his butt, but right there the tackle does a nice job of just snapping to the hip, giving him a chance right now, all right, to go ahead and, and knock it over, guard take it over to tackle to climb. Again, the motion part of it with the quarterback run ends up bouncing a bit wide. But right here with movement, all right? These two guys, shit hit the fan in this game, man. It's 24 to 3, second quarter. It's about the third series. These two freshmen, true freshmen, come into the game, all right? And uh, really did a hell of a job, but things happen. I'll say this he's in here. Mike Cummings. I've learned a ton of football from Mike Cummings, all right? We went to a game one time with seven linemen, and, and, and it was years ago as I was a GA under him, and I learned from him. No matter what the situation is, your kids can't see that, they can't read that, you just go on. And sure enough, these guys came in, and I still go back to that. I probably shot you a text, Mike, and said something to you about it. But you know what? Shit happens, and away we go. Too wide in his base, though, versus the movement. But again, good job by the tight end. He bounces it just a bit wide. And now, pressures, overhang. Right now, there's no backer in the box. Backer's walked up outside. The tackle's going to make a call, alert and movement. As the front side tackle, we're running the counter to the left right here. The left tackle has one on one outside. He's alerting a call right there. He ends up tempoing down right here, expecting possibly to end the dump. He doesn't cross his face. He stays tight to his track, up the hash. Up the hash, it does not change, all right? Right where the guard is, and again, going back to studying it, this is where we really like the uh, guard to be right into the V of the neck, right there, as far as driving that thing. And it's a good read by the quarterback on the run. You got your movement, motions, all that. Now, plays where we're giving the ball out, all right? Going back to this game, all right? The guard got taken out when he pulled, right? So as he came over to the sideline, I said, don't worry, Jay Sean, we, 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 got, we got to do something about that, and we will. So here all it ends up being is a space play. It's counter for us up front. He reads the end, all right? And he just gives it out. Whether you're motioning, whether you're having the receivers block, man on, what have you. For us up front, again, the call is counter. That's it. Right here, the end does it again. He just gives it out. Now it's a guy play. All right, going back to the picture of the three guys. There you go. Make a play, Alvin. He's out in space. Right off of a timeout, much the same. All right, but I put this on too again for the reason of the tackle. And if the ball, if we were to give the ball on the counter or the quarterback were to keep it, there's still something there. The high leg gallop by the tackle, staying tight right to there. It's crossed. There's no cloth as a down lineman. Now take it over. All right, if there's still cloth there, tackle stay into it. He's over top. He's booked himself. The tight end cleans up on that one. Now it's a foot race with those two. Now, 
the back or um, the quarterback, all right, his rule is this. If there's two outside, keep it. Now, as you'll see in this clip, shit happens. And uh, again, it gets back to a guy making a play. Really, this happened pretty fast for our quarterback in which uh, by the structure of the defense, the skies, what have you, he really, the quarterback should have kept it. He gives it out, and that's a back making a play right there. All right? So again, the tackle right here, there's center, work up. This goes away, all right? He needs to shorten his track up. He's too wide in his base, but there it is for us in the gap scheme. Taking it over right there, tight end fitting up, two outside, just keep it. There's your guard on the pull, inside out. Inside out, stay tight with it. Now, we will also... Right now, we got quarterback counter called up front. We got counter going to the right right here. We made one tag, one call to the backside tackle. He's now off of his area hinge backside, and he's going to climb up. He's going to ensure the block back, and he's going to climb up to second level. Quarterback now is reading this cat, all right? So we got counter called here. He's going to read this edge. So again, it becomes a space play. Really like right here with the tackle coming through square. Still needs to be just up underneath that tip. Take this shoulder right up underneath that tip right there. But as you can see, the tackle, he's not area hinging. He can get more of this, but he slips out. Space play with him. Still having a chance to run the counter right here. Not good by the pulling guard. But <clears throat> now this one here. Should have been a keep by the quarterback. But again, and, and, and Coach, where are you at? This is the one I was pointing out with Jonesy. All right? Get excited about running the ball, our quarterback, uh, being our third string quarterback on the sideline. But the three technique right here, nice job by the tackle right here again. Right here, up underneath, he should have ended up keeping it. If it's gray, two outside, I'm keeping it as a quarterback. If it's gray, cram it. All right, any questions on that? Two outside, keep it. If it's great, cram it. Now, right here, again, the running back, you get excited about him. The guy's up front, this is our third string quarterback. All right, he's not even jacked about throwing it. Any questions there, man? I want to get into the bear front. We see a bunch of it. I don't know if you all you see, see it quite a bit, but most everyone we play plays some form of it. The four eyes, uh, a little bit tighter threes at times. Um, this was in 14. Out of the pistol. Uh, by the structure of the defense, right now, we're going right now back on this. Center's going back. He's going on a quick three to the V of the neck. Front side guard's going to the V of the neck on the nose. The tackle right here is working up and under on the three. All right, not very good with his hands right here. Guard inside out. The tight end again now squaring up on this. That ends up being the free hat. We have the motion coming through trying to hold him more, but the tight end coming through is going to go ahead and check front side to back side. He sees the safety down, then it's the back in the, in the linebacker. Now, this is what we see a lot of, the overhangs, all right? Whoever they may be, you got to decide who you're going to book, all right? Now, with this look right here, we end up doubling the center and the front side guard for this backer. The tackle more so in this look off of Coach Mack of up under with the hands of that four eye of getting up underneath him, underneath him and, 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 and 
and the backside tackle the same, we're going to book this defender. We're going to go ahead and knock to this backside linebacker. So obviously the guard's working to here. The tight end's up through for the front side linebacker. Now, let's talk the technique of the front side guard. He's got too much too much turn simply because of his outside arm being involved. Centers the backside, backside foot first, second step down. Guard being more square right there. Not bad by the tackle right here. All right, working to just work his hips up into him more right there up underneath. But here's where Jalen ends up bouncing it out. It is muddy inside. But it, it, it's, it's going into the game plan, whatever you decide. Who do you want to book in it? Sometimes it's, uh, again, some motions that we have with it. Uh, whatever the case may be. But again, in 14 studying this, the quarterback bounces, which really he could be just right now downhill on it. And there again comes the back through on this, holding him enough that really Josh, stay right here. Now, because of where we are on the field, we did honor him, we were booking this backer. Okay, so we were, we were uh, completely back on this. The center's still going right here, backside, Backside foot, second step down, continuing through with his eyes right here for the four eye, the tackle riding it down and working himself out. Again, some more motion with it. This helps versus some of the bear stuff. The guard still needs to be more square. His climb ends up being good and his finish ends up being good, but he makes it a lot harder on himself. Be more square upfield with that inside foot as far as just now picking it up, putting it down. Get upfield with it. Much the same. Here's one again with the read, all right, with uh, motion and just reading the edge, all right. We've got the counter going to the left right here and the quarterback reading the edge that he just gives it out. Now it's a space play, back, overhang guy in space, make a play. Am I right on time? Okay. Again, right here, the guard. A lot of this man is his stance. He's got too much turn right now of just working to be upfield with his inside leg better. Good job by the right tackle right there, right there straining his butt off, all right, of working up underneath. And again, there's things that you got to point out that I do in terms of just this stuff versus the bare look. You got to come back to the sled. You got to come back to the reason of why you're working to establish the mentality of why things are changing and going in the, in, in the direction you want to in terms of, you know, uh, again, improving from one year to the next. Why is it happening? Now, this, this we added as well, all right? Finding ways to take some heat off of the tackles as opposed to just manning up that four eye. We will take, make a call with it being counter and add one tag to take this tackle to set out for this. The guard's course is still in the line of scrimmage, but he knows with the given call that now his course is to trap this four eye out and we still have our same rules as far as whether we're going to knock this thing or whether we're going to back it. But right here is a good example that as he sets this thing, it works out, he collects it, guards into the line of scrimmage, and there it is with his hat gear needing to be better inside out. But all of the rules stay the same. One call's made, it's down the hash. There's your tight end potentially for a cleanup again, if need be, being square up and through. Again, just offsetting the back, flying him, the movement, anything communication defensively helps. All right, the guard's got too much turn. Good job by the tackle right here. Just running him, stay down the hash. Josh ends up bouncing himself out. Stay down the hash right there, following the tight end. Good finish up the field. They ended up uh, backing this thing. The uh, tackle obviously staying in. The center needs to keep tracking. 
But there's your call again, which he's working out to the overhang, inside out. Watch where Jalen needs to stay. Keep working your feet out of the hole. Keep working your feet. Keep working your feet. There it is again. Any questions on any of that, man? The biggest thing that I will tell you is this, is again, from, from 14 to 15, uh, as we really you know, studied the run game and things that we needed to clean up on and improve on, this was a play that we were gaining momentum at the end of 14. We played an Iowa team in the bowl game and, 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 and a good Iowa football team and, and really felt like we were getting some momentum with this play. Our kids, as you can see on the clips, really have confidence in it. Um, and again, from the attitude and the mentality of it, and it helps having the guys that are carrying it. Is there any questions for any a, anything? All right, Coach, um, the front side tackle mm -hmm. blocking the back side linebacker when he doesn't have any cloth to hit. What, how do you teach him to block that back side linebacker? Okay. Okay. So he's into the double team. If the double team completely crosses the face, the backer's over top. He's going right now, play side number on him. Yes, sir. Obviously, if he's scraping, you know, from the timing of the three crosses the face that he's over top, again, the hash and where the back's hitting it, it, it as fast as it happens, it's, it's you know, play side number's where we're going to attack as it crosses right now, all right, and staying vertical with it. If he's ended up over top, that you know, as, as quick as it happens, he's going to take a run and be covering him up, you know. And yes. Yes. Absolutely. Yes. First part of the question, he asked about the bare front and 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 and, and who we're going to book. Some of it's built in with some of the motion stuff to where that part is going to be holding that defender that we don't need to honor the overhang on the line of scrimmage. Or we go into a given game saying we're going to end up honoring it the entire time with guard down, center back, tackle, area hinge out, book the second level. It's all just a game plan deal for us and what we, you know. No, no. And the second part for you that he asked, which is good, the odd front, as you can see up here, the, the guard, all right, and, and, and Jay Sean in those clips I was showing you, 73, needed, he, he needed to be more square into that, into that knocking of the nose. And, and, and again, he was involving his backside arm. He was getting too much turn of being more upfield and fighting to stay square of that to where really he's knocking it. A lot similar to the, you know, very, very much the same as the, the tackle down on the three technique is he's square to it to where if there's not much surface there, snap right at the hip. And I think there was a few clips on there showing you to where, you know, the end result, if you end up hitting that hip a few times, some good things happen in terms of the movement. Guys are really, and here's the biggest thing, come on up B, is, is, is when working this, guys, I found this, that as, as, go ahead, uh, you know what, you're fine. As I'm the guard and the tackle's working right now, the double team in this play, an individual, and you come off and you're doubling the shit out of this and the three's where he's at and there's surface there and it's all good and, you know, your guys are excited and then you get into the, the battle and as that, the play, as he, as he comes off, he squeezes it this much. Your kid looks at you and goes, where's, what happened to that drill we were just doing? So the three technique and drill work of really tightening him up, that those kids really get in the feel of just snapping it, snapping it, snapping it, and really just getting the hands into it. And once they do, they get, they get excited. Now, again, the guard can't just stop his feet and turn right there because everything gets muddy. Just keep working his feet on the, on the delivery of it. So it's just both of them working together to send the guard to guard and attack him. Anything else? Yes. Why uh, Being thicker on it, uh, you know, the backside shoulder. His question, if, any, if you didn't hear it, he said, why changing the landmark on the two eye? We wanted to be thicker on it. We felt like, again, with the second puller being the tight end, that he can clean up as well as B. Come on up, please. I was always 
I always believed that the two eye had gear here because of movement. I'm going to be able to collect any inside internal trash, all that. Well, by gosh, he's going on his course, and it's now he's going to get it down, and the tackle's going to be there that there's, you know what I mean? He's just going to be able to be thicker on it and still be able to see it. So we just wanted to tighten that up again just um, – and, and, and I can't say enough about the second puller. Just that one clip against Bama, he comes up through, he's able to clean up some trash of cleaning up our mess a little bit. Yeah. Guys, I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, I uh, really appreciate the opportunity to be here and uh, talk to you guys about a few things that we have used throughout the years to be successful. I've been, like most of you guys, um, coming to this clinic for numerous years and always come away getting a few things um, that help me with our offensive line, okay? Um, <clears throat> what I'm gonna talk about Today is some pin and pull schemes um, that we use, and then if I have time, I'll get into a screen off of outside zone. Um, as some of you know, may know, may not know, um, we're a spread uh, team, all right? We are mostly in 10 personnel, 11 personnel, 20 personnel. Very rarely do we have a tight end attached or are we in 21 or 12 personnel. So you have to be able to um, run the football in 10 personnel. Everybody is gonna run inside and outside zone, okay? The problem, and, and they're good plays and we run those plays as well. But what becomes a problem is the defense knows what you're running as well. Your, your back's offset to the right. Obviously, you're generally running <coughs> inside zone, outside zone to the left. So in 10 personnel, what we had to do in order to run the ball effectively is come up with some ways to where we could get angles, all right, to help our offensive line. Now, we run a fold play. Um, we run a double puller play where we get double teams and we get angles, but most of those plays are inside runs. We needed to try to figure out how we could get the ball outside, okay? Whether it's D gap, C gap, B gap, all right? By creating angles for our guys. So what we did is we started doing some pin and pull stuff you know, down and around, G, whatever you want to call it, where we're blocking down on the front side and pulling somebody to get the ball to the outside. The other thing for you guys that run out of 10 personnel, you understand if you get a six man box, all right, you have to read somebody or throw off of somebody, whether you're reading a DN, a three technique, an A gap player, or you have to throw off a backer. This is a play that we feel like because it's gonna hit wide, it may not hit in the D or the C gap, but if we set the edge or pin a A gap defender, we can hit it wide enough in the B gap to where a backside defensive end, we don't have to read them. So we can just call this play, hand the ball off in 10 personnel, all right, and not have to read anything. All right, so what I'm gonna do, 
is go through just some of the footwork, how we call it, so that way when I start talking about it, you understand. And most of you guys probably all, already know this stuff. May call it something different, but this is what we call it. And then <laughs> get into some uh, our principles on splits, our principles on stances, and then uh, show you the plays drawn up and then get into some tape, okay? Okay, first thing, and we give this to our guys, this is a guy in the left-handed stance, okay, and it's a lateral lead step, all right, and when we, and, and I'll just give you some examples and you'll see it when I draw it up, see it on tape, but when we would use this, all it is is a three-inch step up the field with three-inch width, second step is coming down, it's going up the field the second step. If I was the left guard, okay, on a down block, so I'm blocking down on this guy, and I have a G, all right, and this guy is a read, defensive tackle. He's not a penetrator. If he was a penetrator, I would, I would lateral lead step with my right foot. Aiming point still stays on the V of the neck. If he's going to play into me, or if he's reading it, all right, which our defense does, then I'm going to lateral lead with my outside or left foot, okay? So all it is is it's just I'm in a left-hand stance, all right, whether it's two or three point, doesn't matter, three inches up the field and three inches lateral. Second step coming right through them. And I'm aiming for the V of the neck, all right? Second step right through the middle of the body. So it's here, here, and I'm just getting this hand on them right through and grab them. Grab with the outside hand, all right? He's gonna play over top. I'm gonna try to keep my body as square as possible, all right? So I'm just gonna try and move him vertically. If he is getting over the top of me, all right, what we do is just drop this foot a little bit, rip the backside arm through, and I'm gonna keep running and then drop cut him, all right? Not many examples of that on tape because most of the time it happens against our defense and we don't cut our defense. Doesn't happen very often in the game where the guy is over the top, okay? Uh, second one would just be a settle step, okay? So if I was the right guard in this case and we were running the pin and pull this way, okay, running this way, I'm comboing this backside three to a backside backer, okay? So all I'm gonna do, pick it up, put it down, second step through. Now the surface that I'm gonna use is dependent on what the backer's doing, okay? I may hand, I may flipper, or I may rip up through, okay? It's just dependent on what is happening with that backside backer, all right? Excuse me. The next thing would be a <coughs> slide or lateral step, okay? Same thing, I'm the right guard, I have a three technique on the back side. So now I'm going to a backer that is stacked. I've gotta get away from this three, so I don't want this three technique squeezing me. So all I'm gonna do is go lateral three inches, second step right up through the inside of his foot, and I'm gonna rip through and try and turn his shoulder back so that backside tackle can come take it over on the backside, okay? So that's the first three steps right there, okay? Next one, again, everybody obviously, and again, whatever you call it is what you call it, okay? If we're on the front side, we're to the open edge, we're running the pin and pull play this way, all right? I have a wide five technique, okay? He's on my outside shoulder. My, outside, my aiming point is the outside V of the neck. Well, how do I get to the outside V of the neck? I don't want to step here, all right, because I, I don't want to reach him, 
okay? I want to stretch him. If I reach him, I reach him. That's fine. But for the most part, I'm not going to reach this guy, okay? So all I'm going to do is bucket, three-inch width, three-inch depth, open my hip, turn my shoulders on an angle to get to the armpit. Second step's going right to the inside foot. I'm trying to run right through the outside via the neck, okay? Drop step would be, again, I'm the left tackle. We're running it to a five technique, and he's widened out, okay? I'm still aiming to get to that outside via the neck. Now, I can't bucket step three-inch width, three-inch depth, because now I'm face-to-face -face or on the inside via the neck. So now what I'm going to do is drop step. So it's about six-inch width, about six-inch depth. This is about. I don't have a ruler out there, so I'm going to just get more width, more depth, open my hips and my shoulders on an angle to get to the outside via the neck, run through the outside via the neck. Uh, high leg, which we wouldn't do on this play here, okay? Uh, with the center, if the center is the puller on our pin and pull scheme, okay, I've had, obviously we all have different guys that have different abilities, so I give them different things they can do. There's three things that I allow them to do if they are the puller, okay? First thing is, so I got a zero, I'm pulling, we got a down block coming on the zero. First thing is drop, just drop this straight back to clear the zero and clear the guard, okay? And then cross open, get some depth, all right, to where I may go around the tackle or inside the tackle, all right? Second thing is skip pull, okay? Just like you would skip pull on power. Gonna do this now, I'm, we're running it this way, I'm pulling this way, so I'm just gonna load up the left foot, all right? Skip here, this foot behind, depth, and now turn, open, and run, okay? The next thing, which I don't do this as much, our center this year does it more than anybody. He open pulls, okay? Open pulls, just like I would do with the right guard if we were running counter to the left. So all he does is just open pull and then go, okay? So those are just different things that I coach the center on how to do. Whatever he does best, I allow him to do it, okay? Any questions there? All right, now. Now, we're probably a little bit different than most people in our splits, okay? I coached at Texas Tech for seven years. Now, we're not like we were at Texas Tech by any means. But what our base split is, is two feet, okay? It's two feet. We will manipulate the split based on the play. What is the play? Okay, well, if we are running ISO to the left, and a man, left tackle, and left guard, we are going to widen out the defenders, especially if I have a three or a five. Well, you say, okay, they know you're running over there. Well, they don't because we would do the same thing if I had a three and a five over there on ISO, if I was running it there or running it away. I do the exact same thing because they're man on the back side. Manipulate the split based on down and distance, all right? Third and long, that week we may widen out, okay? Split those defensive ends and take them wide. And then formation, if we are in an empty formation, all right, if we're in an empty formation, we are going to get, if we can, if we can handle it with our players against their players, we're going to get three foot splits, all right? If we feel good enough about matching up one-on-one. -on -one.
okay? If we don't, we'll get down to two feet because obviously if you're in an empty formation, all right, you're running quarterback draw. We don't really run quarterback run plays. We will run quarterback draw. You're throwing the ball or running the screen, all right? So uh, next thing would be based on uh, field situation. Where are we at? If we're on the goal line, okay, we get down to the goal line, we're going to tighten our splits if we get into a 21 personnel situation, okay? We get 21, we're on the goal line, we'll probably be about one foot split, okay? Um, and then, like I said, personnel, whatever it is, 21 personnel is in the game, we're down the goal line, we'll tighten our splits, all right? Stance. Okay, our guards are always in a three-point stance unless it is third and medium or third and long. All right, always in a three unless it's third and medium, third and long. Our tackles are always in a two-point stance unless it is third and short or goal line. Okay, um, and what we did, we played another team in the Big 12 last year that um, ran a bunch of different fronts. They were in four down, three down, bear, a bunch of different movements, a bunch of different stunts and blitzes. So for that week, everybody was in a two-point stance with the exception of if we got in the goal line. I just felt like it was better for those guys to be up, and we were going fast anyway, for those guys to be up so they could see everything that was happening, all right? Um, so that would be another time that we would do that. If we are in quarterback sneak situation, then we'll get uh, those tackles being a three point. When we go tempo plays, so we run a play, we call our tempo play, we get up to the line, we're gonna snap the ball as fast as we can. I allow our guards to stay in a two point stance, all right? Some of them like it, some of them don't, all right? Um, if they want to get in three, that's fine. But some of those guys were moving so fast, all right, and they like to be up so they can see what the heck is going on, all right? Because guys, a lot of times when we go as fast as we possibly can, things are going to be moving all over the place, okay? So that uh, guard will be in a two-point stance, okay? Any questions there? All right, getting to the scheme. All right, pin and pull versus an even front. All right, and these are just drawn up against that's four wides. All right, two by two, three by one. Okay, versus a four two under or over, just depending on what the strength is. Okay, we're going to man the front side. It doesn't matter what that guy does, hits in or out. Your technique is going to change based on what his alignment is. If he's a four technique, I'm gonna step my inside foot. If he's a five, I'm gonna step my outside foot. Doesn't matter, okay? Now, the, we call this a cap. Doesn't matter what you call it. So he's down blocking, he's pulling around for the mic backer, all right? Um, so with the down block on the G, just like I said, if it is a penetrator, we're gonna lateral lead with our inside foot. If it's a guy that's reading, is gonna play into the guard or play over the top, then we're gonna step with our lateral lead with our outside foot. Center is pulling for the Mike Backer, reading this if we stretch the defensive end, pulling up into the B gap, all right? If, we, if the end hits inside, then he's pulling around to the Mike Backer. The swipe on the backside, all right? This combination block on the backside will do a couple different things, and it's all based on where is the alignment of the backside backer, okay? So I'm the right guard, that's a three technique, okay? If he is backside, all right, I am going to keep my shoulders square and rip through, all right? So the backside backer's backside, I'm just gonna pick this left foot up, put it down, rip through, 
turn his shoulder back and climb to the backside back. Backside tackle, right tackle. I am going to drop step or open pull. If he thinks he can get there by drop stepping, all he's gonna do is six inch width, six inch depth, aim for the inside via the neck, inside armpit. If he's got a bigger split, then he is going to open pull, open pull just like you would if he was running counter, get to the inside and then cut, all right? Um, so if the backer is inside, all right, if he has this out leveraged, all right, the guard, a couple, th he's gonna bucket or drop just depending on where he is, all right? Now he's gonna use his hand, all right? So if he's got me out leveraged, I'm gonna bucket, drop, second step up the field, punch the shoulder, try to knock it back. Or if he's a three technique that is grabbing, then he can swat his hands down, okay? But the backside tackle, same thing. Now, if the backside tackle knows, which we make a call, that all he's doing is using his hand and he's gone, that backside tackle, now he can no longer drop step, he's going to open pull, all right? Open pull, flat down the line to get to the inside so he can cut him, all right? Now, one of the reasons I like this play is because you run a bunch of inside zones. So say we get a 4-1 front, the sand backer is splitting the difference, okay? And I think everybody has this dilemma is, do I count that guy, do I not count that guy? Well, if you don't count him, all right, he is the B-gap player. We're double teaming the shit out of this. This receiver has no chance to block him, so he's just gonna fit inside right there in the B-gap in order to run. If you do count him, all right, if you do count this guy, then everything is going uphill. You get no vertical push, all right, in my opinion. So we come into it and we'll game plan. Sometimes we'll count, sometimes we won't. But in this play, for the most part, we are going to count that backer. So we feel like now we can get him up on the safety, him on the corner, stretch him or reach him down, all right, go cut him if we can, if not, just stretch him. Now this is the tough block here, but we feel like we're gonna create enough of a seam, all right, in the front side B gap to where we can get to that backside backer and cut him and then cut the three technique on the backside, okay? This stuff is all the exact same, it's just out of trips, which you'll see on the, uh, on the tape there, okay? This is out of two backs, okay? The only thing that changes is now, obviously you're at least gonna get a six man box, it's the same thing, and then he's leading on whatever becomes the front side guy. Here's versus an even front. So we're pulling to the mic, leading on the wheel, swiping to the Sam on the backside. This would be a case, the Sam is out leveraged, all right, he, where the guard has him out leveraged so he can keep his shoulder square, all right, pick it up, put it down, flip her through, keep his shoulder square, knock him back, and then get to the Sam back on the backside. If he was working to the mic, all right, this guard would obviously have to leave, all right, now you just give him hand or knock his hands down, okay? Now, out of uh, 11 personnel, do a couple different things here, all right? We can Troy, what we call Troy, double out to it, or we can down, pull for the Sam, pull him back for the mic, pull, or, and then swipe to the will on the backside. So here is an example where we're manning it, down blocking here, all right? pulling for the sand, pulling for this, swiping. And then here's an example where Troy, just a zone combo up to the Sam, capping on the G, swiping on the backside. All right, versus the odd front, okay? Versus the odd front. And this is the play, you know, we're, we're always looking for play in 10 personnel now. I mean, I know you can run counter, you can run a bunch of stuff in 20, but in 10 personnel, this is where I like to play the best. And we've had a chance to work it over and over against our defense, especially with those four eyes. All right, how are you going to block them? What are you going to do with them? With a four eye that's reading. So the reason I like it is, as soon, again, our defense and defenses that we've seen, as soon as that tackle steps inside, that left tackle, that guy squeezes so it makes it easier for that tackle to pin him inside. All right, so we feel like 
even without a tight end there against an odd front, we can set the edge and get the edge if the, if the four eye is a reader. Now, if there's blitz coming, the four eye hits out, obviously you cannot set the edge, all right? But, and then we're gonna do the same thing. Now, if he's down blocking on a zero, okay, that guard, down blocking on a zero, he is going to have to bucket or drop step. He can no longer lateral lead with his right foot, so he's gonna have to open his, he's still aiming for the V of the neck. Nothing changed, but how he gets there changes. So he's gonna move up on the ball some, all right? Open, come down, V of the neck. I get my right hand across. All right, right hand across to stop the penetration, left hand grab. I don't care where you grab, hip, uh, side right here or on the pad, doesn't matter to me. All right, backside, couple different things. I think it should be drawn up here. If that backside guard feels like he can get to the backside backer, so he has him out leverage, he's gonna go. If the guy that he is going to, which this is the example right here, the will, he can, there's no way he can get to that will. So he's gonna pull as well, all right? So we're gonna have two pullers, front side center, backside guard, he's pulling to the will, backside he's manning or sifting up to the rover, okay? The same exact thing, uh, the only exception is now it's out of two backs. Okay, uh, we got some practice tape on here, all right, from, uh, you know, because we see a bunch, last year, this was a play that we started running about five games into the season. We were basically in 10 personnel inside and outside zone, and that was it, all right? That's all we did. So, you know, hell, we weren't running the ball very well, and we obviously had to find a way to run the ball better. So we went to this, which it gave our guys some angles all right, to create some seams. And it became a good play for us, and now we're gonna run it a bunch this year, okay? Now we have, we're going tempo, they're not lined up, okay? So left guard, we got a four two, it's an under front, we got trips here, he's going to reach, he should drop step to the outside via the neck, he should step with the left foot up the field, open pull, skip pull, drop the inside foot, pull into the backside backer, swiping on the backside. Now, this is kind of a gray area right here, okay? But with that guy inside of the three technique, he's gotta go. Because he's gotta assume that that backside backer's going to run on the backside. So he should bucket step, now he winds out bucket step, post with the right hand, all right? Now one thing, I like here with the backside tackle, and this is what I teach. Never really taught it before. I think I got it from somebody here, but and it's this generally doesn't happen with a three technique, where you reach a three technique like this. But he is open pulled, he's past the three. Now, the tendency, at least for my guys, is to turn back this way. Well, if you turn back that guy, way well, that guy's going flat down the line of scrimmage. So I teach him to, you're here, if you beat the guy, you overreach them, now open and turn back this way and stop them here. It's the same thing as if I had a four eye, all right? Four eyes are a hell of a lot easier to reach. Our guys, we play against them all the time, they see it. So what our guys are doing, we've reached them here, I've ripped my backside arm through, and now what he's gonna try to do is he, he doesn't mind getting reached because what he's gonna try to do is throw me and then come down the line right there. That's how our guys play, not many guys do. So it's the same concept. I'm here, bucket, rip the backside arm through. If he is trying to escape and play behind me, I'm going to turn back this way and try and cut him off that way. I'm not gonna turn back to him. So that's just an example of it right here, okay? Now, right here, like see his right hand more in the middle of the body right there, okay? And we can't do it with our guys, but if he got into this situation, all right, I'd want him to keep running and forcing his helmet to the outside V of the neck and keeping his shoulder square. 
Now he gets head up to me. I can open my inside foot a little bit and rip my backside arm through to try to cut him off. And then if I can't, then I would drop cut him. All right. <clears throat> He's got backside guard, has to go. All right, same, pretty much the same look right here. Not much difference right there. All right, now, this is, this is two years ago, okay? We've got a perfect box right here. I don't know what the down and distance is. We're running pin and pull to the left, all right? Now, in a five-man box, and it's not happening here, but this is what we are doing now, all right? We hadn't had this situation come up on tape, but we are, especially with the three technique, this wide, all right? What we're going to do on the back side with that tackle is he's going to treat it just like it's the backside of power, okay? Because what we have to be ready for here is a twist between the three and the five technique. So we call it reaching in. So the right tackle, okay, he is going to step down inside, post down here, keep his eyes on him. If he gets the looper or the twist, now he's going to pull the three technique outside and the guard's going to take him because they are man on the backside. And again, like I said, it's not happening in this situation, but right here with this alignment, you have the threat for us of a twist. All right, three up the field and looping. And now for whatever reason that thing comes back, he's going to hit it. All right, so we treat it anytime we're on man on the backside. All right, and they feel like there could be a twist. We're going to treat this tackle again. We call it reaching hinge like it's the backside of power. Okay. Uh, right here, good boom, right hand across, facing the V of the neck, the left tackle's laid off the ball, but good seam right there. Okay, now, this is an example of the backside guard and tackle. Backside guard and tackle. They are swiping to a backside backer. He is not out leveraged, so he is going to lateral, lateral, rip through, turn the shoulder back, all right, and then get to the backer. Maybe stay fit into it just a little bit more, all right? This is more my fault than this guy's fault. These guys are big readers. I should have had them stepping with the outside foot, but I was worried about them. They did penetrate at times, so I was worried about the penetration right there, but does a good job right here. The other thing, this is a, and TCU is a hell of a defense, all right? And what they would do is they would really stretch this guard on our zone plays knowing the ball was going to cut back and then play the front side but you can see what the front side backers doing right here okay now what he doesn't know is that center's coming and he can pin that guy if he plays back but this is what they did against our zone so this was a good play all right to complement our zone because of the front side backer playing back with him thinking that this ball couldn't get out to the front side. All right, again, ver now it's four versus four down with a tight end. He's man down block called G. He's pulling for the front side backer. He's pulling for him, but checking it first, good. And now he doesn't come. Now pull around to the outside. All right, he should be aiming for the outside number. Outside number. Like to see him aim even wider than that right there. All right, just keep the three technique pinned, and we're fine there. The, who's that? The center? He's going. Yes, yeah, he's reading that defensive end. Yeah. Exactly right. Yeah, if that guy hit out, he would be inside. If he stays pinned inside, then we're pulling all the way around. And this is, this is when we started running the play last year was versus an odd front again. The year before we saw a bunch of odd front, not as much this year. We see it a bunch against our defense, okay? Now, what we're doing now, again, this is a process of going through the play, all right? That backside guard should have, we always have him with a three-foot split so he can clear this nose if that nose were to hit back, all right? So all we're doing is Pick it up, put it down way too far with the first step, grab. He's going to squeeze inside, just pin him inside, all right? He just open, pulling, all right, aiming for the outside. This guy does us a favor and spills it right there, okay? 
So it's a simple play right there. What, the one thing we had, our defense did is they started, and I'll show you an example of it here in a second. They started taking out of trips this guy and plussing him over. So we could initially, we run it, run it, we could get to him. Then we couldn't get to him. Now we can pull that backside guard all the way around. I think there will be an example of it. Okay, same thing. He, can't, he really shouldn't be able to get to this guy right there. That backside backer doesn't play it very good right there. All right. Now, this, again, this is how we started out doing it, okay, was we, we're both going for the same guy just in case he blitzes and then he'll go to the safety. Well, he pins him, all right, center does a pretty good job of adjusting to it and now and, and this is a hell of a job and, and again I know some I think most at coach Mahoney I mean we got two unbelievable backs all right and this guy does a great job here watch him here just dick him inside and then that guy jumps inside and he's outside all right does a great job of setting up all the blocks here's an example and this is not a good play but if you guys were to run this play all right again we were just like I said widening his split he's got a three foot split right there to get to him well now he can't get to him there's no possible way he can get to him so if he cannot get to that guy then what he needs to do is now pull around all right there's no possible way he can get to that guy so again, he's out, and it's more my fault than his fault. But after this, we adjusted to it. That guy gets plussed over. You can't get to him on the backside. Now you got to pull around because if he pulls around right here, then we got a chance for a good play. Now here is the double pullers, or both guys pulling. Okay, he may be able to get to him. He may not. He made the, that backside tack, or guard made the decision. I can't get to this guy. Okay, now. Here's the other thing. After that, you saw that one play where we had the inside receiver blocking the overhang guy. Now we told the inside receiver, don't mess with him. We'll account for him. We'll get to him. He goes to safety. So now you got basically everybody blocked on the field with the exception of the backside safety, and they're playing some type of cover two over here. All right, now it's out of two backs. Now the, okay. Right here, this guy, the tackle should see, all right, he should see that that four eye has widened out. And st it works out, but he should see that he has widened out and now step with his left foot. He steps with his inside foot, which I don't want him to do. It all works out, all right, but he should, we should be getting calls over here alerting him, but he should also see the guy's not a four eye, all right, or even a four. It's a five and all his weight's leading outside, all right, but Again, we're not reaching them. We're not pinning them. But what we've done is we've created a B, a big B gap. And now this chase guy, I know he gets picked off in there. All right. But if he didn't get picked off, even though he's chasing, he shouldn't be able to get to the play because the ball is hitting wide in the B gap. It's really hitting into what would be the C or the D gap right there. And a lot of times you run outside zone to a three technique, at least we do. Everything stretches on the front side with a three technique and it cuts back right to the defensive end. This should allow you to just hand the ball off and go. And he's aiming for the exact same spot he would be on outside zone. All right, same thing just now, the two backs awful by the, this guard but good by the tackle we get everything pinned inside like to see him go just throw on him right he's running at the same aiming point and I'm telling you we got we're in a great situation I mean these son of a bitches will block you they can catch they can run they can do all that stuff these guys right these two dudes right here are what makes this stuff work here all right this is to the tight end this is how we did it this is two years ago this is how we did it two years ago, all right? So we down blocked the tight end, pulled him for this, and wrapped him, and then scoop what we call scoop on the backside. Right now, what we would do is, all right, we could down this, pull him, but we would down to set more of an edge right there. Here's a little bit different look, all right, where we're pulling both of those guys, all right? Front side tackle 
and front side guard. But again, what we would do now, we could man this, send him out, down block, pull for this. Or we could pull both. It doesn't matter how you do it. All right, I got time for this wide receiver screen? Okay. Uh -huh. He's looking at the widest defender. Yep, down line. He is reading exactly like outside zone. If that thing gets pinned, and on our outside zone, we don't try to reach shit either. We straight. Yes. But, but, but he's still going to stretch it. Just like, yeah, just like you saw on that one to open up the front side. But. No. Yeah, yeah, just go. Go. Yeah, and, that, and, and again, it, like that one you saw, that was a pretty big seam that if he would have cut that back too soon, now there's a chance that that guy, the backside, the, the rope, what we call the rover, the buck, whatever the hell you call him in a three man front, he can chase it down, but he stretched it enough and then got vertical up the field. All right, wide receiver screen. This is off of outside zone, okay? Um, so obviously, and we only, and we're a little bit different than some people. We're going to run it both ways this year, but last year we only ran it to the right, okay? We do some of those things with our plays. We get a receiver that's really good at it on the right or to the left, and then we'll just run the screen to that side. So this is a screen that we showed outside zone to the left with our back. Our O-line showed inside zone, and then we threw the screen out to the right. We always ran it out of two backs, whether the back was in the hip, the, the full back tight end. This is a couple different people for us, whether he was in the hip position or in the, uh, in the backfield here, all right? And mostly we would run it uh, out of this formation right here, tight end trips look. Okay, so all we're doing is on the front side, we're showing inside zone. So again, these are our calls for inside zone. So these three are responsible for those three. All right, we're swiping to the will. So on the back side of this, this back side guard, okay, depending on what he has. Here he has a G. So all he's going to do, he's going to step, try to show inside zone, get him to squeeze, push, and then open and climb vertical to pin the Mike Backer. Okay. The front side, the right tackle, the tackle to the screen is responsible for number three, whoever number three is, all right? The fullback is responsible for number two, and the uh, inside receiver is responsible for number one, and we're throwing it to the outside receiver. We're trying to keep this ball wide. So all we're trying to do is step up the field with the receiver, come back, and try and get the ball vertical up the field, all right? There are some things that we do out here with calls and all that that you'll see on tape, but that we can do with these two receivers. If the corner is way off, he'll stay on, and then he'll go to the corner. So they do some things out there, all right? If right here, okay, we're going to swipe it, and you'll see it on tape. He's going to show this guy just like inside zone. So he's going to pick up his inside foot. He's going to flip her through and then get to the Mike Backer. He is going for number three, who becomes number three. It's either going to be the safety or the mic. We've run this enough against our defense that we call him number three, because as soon as they see the fullback sprint to the flat, that front side backer runs with them. Now, as he steps inside, goes vertical, if for whatever reason he plays inside and the guard can get to him, now that will become number three. But initially going into it, that guy right there for us is number three. If the, like I said, if the guard can get to him, he'll take him. All right, here it is versus stack look, all right, and then versus the uh, odd front right there. So we're going out, smashing what we try to do. 
in an odd front with a zero is pull the nose over, hit the hip with the guard, and have the backside guard climb to that will. And a lot of people think, well, it's not, and I don't know if there's a look on tape, but a lot of people say, well, that guy's out of the play. Well, if for whatever reason that screen comes all the way back inside, all right, then that will, will become a factor. If the nose were to hit back, then the center would climb up to the will backer. All right, with a four eye, okay, if that guy has a four eye, the tackle is just going to step inside and then arc release to number three, which in this case right here, he's number three. Now, if he becomes a five technique, then he's going inside to him, okay? All right, he's responsible for number one, he's responsible for number two, and we'll run off of this right here. Okay, 4-3 box, so again, obviously we gotta see the box. <clears throat> There's one, two, three. So he's on two, he's on one, he's on three, all right? And again, we, we've adjusted this a little bit with some things out here. I'd like to see the, the guard just go right here, pin that right there. He's showing him inside, boom, one, two, flipper through. All right, this guy feels like inside zone. He's a non-factor on the play. One step, okay, good, keep him pinned inside. I do not want this guy here beating him over the top, okay? He can come underneath right there, all right, but he can't beat him over the top. Okay, what we should have done here and if this guy, okay, this is obviously right now, okay, they're showing blitz, all right, there's one, there's two, all right, this guy becomes number three, okay. But if he's a blitzer and he's going to blitz, now if he retraces, which we throw it fast enough that he may retrace, but if he retraces right here, then you got to go block him. But in this case right here, obviously he's going to him to block him, so he knocks him out there. But, in this specific, but... If he's out, don't worry about him. Now, again, this guy, the backside safety, becomes number three. If he didn't blitz, okay, then he becomes number three. Now, the other thing that may happen is this guy may become number three. It doesn't matter who becomes number three. You're responsible for number three. One, two, count outside in, one, two, and then three. Let his ass go, go to this guy, or if he beats him over the top, go to him. But again, if he gets up on that safety, then we got a better play. Okay, this is what we did here, all right? Obviously, that's number two, okay? Corner, good. Get the play started. He will see it. This guy will see it and then adjust to the corner there. And again, we want to take the ball up the field. We don't want it getting inside here. It doesn't, it could be inside here. Okay, that would be no problem. But we don't want to play in there. Right. One more play? Okay. Okay, now, this is a bitch on the tackle. Okay, this is a bitch on the tackle. But right here, he thinks he's coming. That's one, two. All right. As he steps and he drops, now again, that becomes number three. So he should really go out on that guy and kick him out, all right? And then we would have to run off of this guy. But he's gotta see it, gotta see that this guy has dropped out right there and then go kick him out. That guy becomes number three. So again, whoever number three is, that's who he's gonna block. It could be the Sam out there, it could be somebody on the line dropping out, it could be the safety rolling down, it could be the backside safety. Okay, thank you guys, I appreciate it.